economic performance. To measure the economic performance, we talked about macroeconomic, macroeconomics. That's how we can measure the economic performance of the country. So, in the last class, we talked about using unemployment rates to measure the economic performance of the country. We talked about economic growth to measure the economic performance of the country. So today, we want to talk about inflation and balance of payments. So we start with inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is a persistent rise in the price of goods or service and services within an economy. So when the price of goods and services continue to increase in an economy, then the economy is witnessing inflation. So here, inflation it is a persistent rise in the price of goods and services in the economy. So when, when we talk about inflation, inflation can be positive, it can be negative. When inflation is positive, it means prices continue to rise over years within that economy. And when we have a negative rate of inflation, it means prices start falling. So definitely we're talking about, let's say we have a 5% a 5% increase here, plus 5%. That is a positive one. Then we have, let's say for, for, for 2014, let's say for 2014, it was 5% inflation rate. By 2015, which is this year now, let's say 2015, we are having 3% rate of inflation. That means inflation has fallen below by 2%. So that's a negative rate of inflation, which means price starts falling. So that is going between positive inflation rate and negative inflation rates. Positive inflation rate means plus, that means prices continue to rise. And negative means price starts falling. So we go to the impacts of inflation in an economy. The first one, it reduces the value of what savings can buy. So when we talk about the values of what savings can buy, we're talking about the amount of money you have saved in the bank. With inflation rate, the value of money drops. That is what it means. So whatever amount of money you have saved in the bank, based on the fact that there's inflation rate in the country, that amount of money would not be able to buy what it used to buy. So if you have, if you have saved $5,000 in the bank, so the worth of $5,000, now that you saved it in the bank, with inflation rate, what $5,000 would buy this year, based on an increase in inflation rate, it will not be able to buy it with the year that there is inflation. So that's why we say the value of money, the value, it reduces the value of savings. So when we talk about the value of savings here, we're talking about the value of money itself. So inflation reduces the value of money, which is not good for the economy. Two, so it distorts knowledge of prices in the market, as consumers want to know the ideal price for certain items. With inflation rate, especially high inflation rate, it becomes difficult for consumers to know the reasonable price in the market because every now and then prices continue to rise. So you go to the market today, it's $5. You go tomorrow, it is $6. So after tomorrow, it is 6.5. So you won't be able to know the reasonable price to buy goods or services within an economy, which is not good. So note, inflation reaching 5% is considered high according to economists. Inflation within below 5% is still reasonable, but if it is beyond 5%, that's the, bar the 5% barrier. If it is above the 5%, then the economy is witnessing high inflation rates, which is a problem. Then go to deflation. Inflation, the, op the opposite of inflation is deflation. So what is deflation? Deflation is the persistent fall in the price of goods and services in an economy. The problem about deflation is that it does not allow a country to increase its GDP. You won't be able to increase your GDP because prices are falling. As prices fall, investments will fall. When investment falls, it means output in that economy would fall. And if output falls in that economy, what happens? The GDP of that country will fall. So it means that with deflation, with deflation, the price of goods and services will fall within that economy. Then that takes us to balance of payments. We talk about balance of payments. We talk about balance of payments. We say it's the statement of all transactions of the country and the rest of the world over a period of time, mostly one year. So what we're saying is this. Balance of payment will bring about a transaction within an economy. So that means an economy is having a transaction. So within this transaction, we are, what, you are, what is being produced in this country is either being exported or we are importing to the country. So our transaction between Libya as a country, its transaction against the rest, uh, with the rest of the world is called balance of payment. So our transaction can be imports, or exports. If our transaction is import, it means what? This implies that a nation is spending on foreign goods and services. So our transaction is import if we continue to buy goods or services from abroad. 
there is export. Why do we call it export? We call it export because we are selling to foreign customers. So the difference between import and export is that goods are sold to foreign customers. Import goods are sold to goods, goods are spent. Import means spendings on foreign goods and services. Export means goods are sold to foreign customers. So here I wrote, an economic performance of a country will be considered all day. Will be considered all day. Because we are measuring the economic performance. So the economic performance of the country will be considered LD if its export value are greater than or approximately equal to the value of imports. So an economy will be considered performing well. So here yeah, because we are measuring the economic performance. So measuring the economic performance of a country using balance of payments means we are considering importation and exportation. So if our export exceeds imports, or our export is equal or approximately to import, it means our country is doing well. That means the economic performance of that country is elevated. In contrast, if the value of import exceeds export, then the country might be in difficulty. So here, if our import exceeds export, this means we are spending more than what we are receiving in terms of revenue. So that means the country is in difficulty. When this happens, to stop this, the country might reduce borrowing, or the country might increase borrowing or reduce savings from abroad. So to reduce this, that means to, to make your export to exit import, you have to start investing in capital goods. That will increase, increase your export. So we'll go to balance of trade. For balance of trade, I wrote, this is the difference between a country's export and imports of goods. So without balance of trade, without balance of trade, we can't get balance of payments because as soon as balance of trade is happening, then balance of payments makes the transaction. So there's transaction that's import and export. The statement that records this our export and import is the balance of payments. So for the balance of payment, 